Hello friends, it's Carla, your online doctor with today's Live in 5. Today is Friday, October 9th and it is 5 p.m. We made it to Friday. Hallelujah. Okay, so this week I've been talking about things related to COVID-19's vaccine and how you can give, get a mild case or an asymptomatic case um, if you are exposed, there are things you can do. Nothing is a guarantee, of course, but you can certainly increase your chances or decrease your chances of something bad happening. So we talked all week about different things related to a blog post or a Facebook post that a dear friend of mine, a medical colleague had shared. And it was so great that I, and I've been sharing this stuff with you guys for for months, so I just wanted to reiterate it, and it was like, it gave me <clears throat> a good feeling knowing somebody else that I respect agrees with me. So again, Monday we talked about vaccine interference and immune priming, so if you missed those, go back and watch those. On Tuesday we talked about the genetically modified virus that they are trying to incorporate into a new vaccine with new vaccine technology never before used on humans and we will be the guinea pigs for that COVID vaccine. Uh, Wednesday, we talked about <clears throat> herd immunity and how you can, again, give yourself a fighting chance to have a asymptomatic or mild, mildly symptomatic case um, day one of that. And then Thursday, yesterday, we talked about vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is by far the uh, most talked about natural uh, supplement that you can add to your routine to give you a, a better chance, again, of having a very robust immune system and can give you a better chance of having a uh, less severe case of COVID should you get it. So let's finish up today with a few other things. Um, number, I guess this would be number three on the list because we started with mask wearing, vitamin D, and now the next one is zinc, okay? For eons, we have known that zinc suppresses viral replication in the cytoplasm of the cell, okay? Most COVID protocols recommend between 50 to 80 milligrams per day of zinc. It's best absorbed in the citrate, gluconate, or picolinate forms. Chelated forms also um, increase absorption even further. So those are the ones that you want to be looking for. Now studies show that zinc deficient populations are at a higher risk of acquiring viral infections and overall immune deficiency. Okay, due to its role as a cofactor of many viral enzymes. Now personally, I take 30 milligrams per day of zinc since I found higher doses tend to create stomach upset in general and in me, so um, that's what I recommend. Again, this is in not in the face of infection, so the 50 to 80 milligrams is in a population of people who currently are infected with COVID. You are welcome to take more than the 30 that I take, but that is um, where I started. I just had my zinc level checked and it is normal, so um, I'm good with that. Uh, again, if you ever, are concerned about any of these things um, that are testable, that you can get a blood test to check, check them. Ask your doctor and see if you are in the normal range and if you are on the low end, you can always supplement. Um, number four on the list or number two for today is vitamin C. Again, we've talked about this before. The antiviral benefits are well known for vitamin C. In fact, at most large medical centers right now, hospitalized COVID patients are receiving vitamin C intravenously. They're getting 3,000 milligrams every six hours. Okay, again, this is not uh, how much I recommend you take at home. Um, this is IV, I mean, I know I have friends who do get home IV treatments periodically, but we're not talking every six hours. You're not gonna get that at home. This is for um, an acute situation. Um, in reality, when taking orally high doses of vitamin C, they don't get fully absorbed. 
So if you plan to take doses of 2,000 to 4,000 milligrams per day, you should take them in divided doses of no more than 500 milligrams at a time. Um, so you aren't flushing the excess amount literally down the drain. So if you want to up your, I take 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C um, a day in two doses. Sometimes I'll go up to 2,000 and I'll take it four times during the day. It's up to you. Sometimes it's just how I feel. Okay, so again, this is a very easy one to take. It is a wa water-soluble vitamin. What you don't use, you flush, your body flushes out. So do not take 2,000 milligrams at once because you're basically wasting 1,500 milligrams. So start with a lower dose of 500 and take it multiple times. Um, the last one that I want to talk about today, and I could pronounce this incorrectly, is cure quercetin or quercetin, I don't know how it's pronounced, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N. Okay, it's a bioflavonoid derived from fruit. It has been used for cellular health for decades, but its special contribution to the COVID discussion is that it is a zinc ionophore. In layman's terms, it promotes the transport of zinc from the bloodstream into the cell where it is needed. Okay, so if zinc has antiviral effects and, and impairs or um, impedes viral replication, quercetin is the one that's going to help it get into the cell to do its job. Okay, so the prophylactic dose is 500 milligrams per day, and its absorption is improved by taking vitamin C at the same time. <laughs> okay, also bromelain, which is a digestive enzyme derived from pineapple, also increases its absorption. Um, and a lot of times you'll find supplements that um, contain the quercetin, um, contain bromelain to increase its absorption. So personally, for me, every morning I am taking quercetin, zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin D. Like, get it all in at once, right? Why not? So the summary of it all, a mask will reduce the number of viral particles that enter your body, okay? Remember, 500, easier to fight 500 or 50 uh, invading army people than it is to, to fight off 50,000, right? So uh, those that do attach to your cells will encounter a high intracellular zinc level to inhibit viral replication. Those that do replicate will in, not induce a cytokine or a bradykine storm due to the optimal vitamin D levels you'll have. Um, so I believe these measures will improve your chances of having a mild or an asymptomatic case, making the vaccine discussion irrelevant. So with that said, if you are not taking the supplements that I talked about, they're not the only ones. I mean, if you Google COVID and supplements, you're going to get a whole list of other things. These, to me, are the core ones. There's a few others that I talk about and some that I'm going to talk about next week as well. But talk to your medical health care provider and get their opinion on if these are okay for you to take. For the most part, they are very neutral and very well tolerated. So get your mask on. Get your vitamin D out, your zinc, your vitamin C, your quercetin and give yourself a mild case if you are to get infected. So on that note, it is Friday. I hope you're having wonderful plans and things with your family and things uh, to do. If you are on the Gulf Coast and you are uh, facing a hurricane today, my prayers are go out to you, to my friends that are in that area. I hope you hunker down, everything stays safe. Message me when you get through it. Hopefully very little damage and obviously stay safe. So on that note, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Monday for another Live in 5.